seventh round from the magazine, a rim over rim misfeed occurred, but the experienced operator worked the bolt again, tilting the rifle to the right to be sure that any case or round in the breechway was cleared, and he continued firing. So here is the misfeed again in slow motion. The number four was made in England and North America during World War II and later on in Pakistan. Until the outbreak of the Second World War, Enfield Royal Small Arms Factory had made most of the service lees. But apart from trials models in the early 1930s, the number four and then the number five were not made at Enfield. In fact, more number four rifles were made in North America during the war than in Britain. Mass production of the 303 number four rifle heralded a new era in British rifle manufacture, but the first of these new rifles were not produced until late in 1941. Sir Winston Churchill's photo op with the new number four rifle did not happen until late November 1942, and it was from about this time that the number four was available to frontline units in quantity. Sufficient numbers were stockpiled by then from the three British factories as well as the United States and Canadian contracts. After a small production, approximately a thousand, of the number four Mark I trials rifles, the next rifle in the series is the number four Mark I issue rifle. Now the safety drill. Check. Not always check the rifle. Now this one differs from the number one Mark VI in that it hasn't got the lightning cuts on the side of the receiver. It's got a flat receiver unlike the earlier number one rifles. Still retains the uh, solid band without the swivel. Still has swiveled front band. Still has the bayonet lugs on the barrel. When we come down to the same sight system with a battle sight and a 1300 yard click sight. Now on these, the very early production have a very small aperture on the battle sight. The later production has a larger aperture. This particular rifle is 1941, it's one of the early ones. It still retains the flanged cocking piece similar to the number one Mark VI trials, but unlike the number one Mark VI, it, it isn't held on by a screw. It reverts back to the number one style where the uh, firing pin actually screws into the cocking piece. On later number four Mark I's, they'll have the uh, squared cocking piece with the grooves, which is again another method to speed up production. The early ones have a solid mill trigger guard. Some of the later ones have a fabricated trigger guard. No butt marking disc. And then the number fours can have a mixture of either zinc alloy butt plates or uh, gunmetal butt plate. Now the next rifle in the series is the number four Mark I Star. Again, the same as the number four Mark I. There's the basics, the bayonet lugs, the solid sight protector. They've done away with the hinged front band, so it's just a plain metal front band. The middle bands, a lot of them are fabricated instead of being milled. There's a series of back sights to speed up production. There's, fa there's fabricated ones, the simplest of the lot is this little fella, which is a 300-600. It's sighted for 300 yards with the bayonet attached and 600 yards for open shooting. We'll do the... Now this particular one is an early one. Again, it's got the flanged cocking piece. Most of the one stars that you counter will have the square milled cocking piece. The production of the one stars can be very interesting. They can have solid mill trigger guards, they can have all sorts of cheap fabricated trigger guards, they can have the milled stock bracket for the butt, they can have fabricated ones, they can have alloy butt plates but they can have brass butt plates, they can have groove or not have a groove front hand guard. The main feature of the, num of the number four Mark I star is the simplified version of removing the bolt which was organised again to speed up production. Unlike the earlier pattern, you pull the bolt back, there's a groove on the side, you pull the bolt back until the bolt head's in the groove, lift the bolt head, remove the bolt. And that, that is the main reason for the change from one to one star. Now the next rifle in the series is the number four Mark II. Now we can do the safety. Again, very similar design, sight protectors, the one-piece bands, fabricated, 
we're back to the mill site, which is graduated to 1,300 yards. It's got the later pattern mill cogging piece. The major difference in this model, instead of the trigger being pinned to the trigger guard, like on the, all the previous models, the trigger is actually pinned to the front of the action. And then there's a strengthening screw through the back of the forward, which goes through the bracket that the trigger is attached to. A few other little features. On these, the trigger guard itself is thinned down. And it's gone back to the Mark I style of um, taking out the bolt, but pushing the little lever down, lifting the bolt head, removing your bolt. Being made in peacetime, these are probably the best made number fours of the lot. They've reverted back to the brass butt plate. And the main timber that they're made out of is beech. This particular model has become the favourite for rifle club and mil military rifle shooters. These were made from rifles that were test fired and selected for their accuracy. They'll be stamped with a TR on the bottom of the receiver ring, the action ring, a T above the number four Mark I designation. On the foresight block, where well, they have a screw to tighten to hold the foresight blade in place. They have a cheek piece fitted. Apart from that, everything else is identical to the standard issue rifle. The scope pads and fitted onto the rifle and staked. The battle peep has been taken off the back sight because it would get in the way of the, the scope. They have quick adjustable back sights that are sighted to 1300 yards. There's a series of um, different variations of scopes in the number 32 range. The scope ad adopted was originally the straight line scope for the uh, Bren machine gun. The front screw screws into the actual pad that's uh, attached to the rifle. The back pad is a locating pad for the mounts and it actually screws into the action itself. The new Commonwealth Issue FNFAL self-loading 7.62mm rifle saw some conversions of the number 4 along with the new nomenclature. The 7.62 number 4 became the L8 and a commercial option was offered by Sterling Engineering in Essex. A heavy barrel service target rifle was the L39A1, which was followed by a civilian version, the Envoy. In another variant, police tactical sniper model was called the Enforcer. The new 7.62mm NATO sniper rifle was designated the L42A1, which effectively saw the end of Britain's century of Lee Enfield service rifles, a proud tradition indeed. For armour detail and exploded parts drawings, see our Small Arms Identification Series, number 2 and number 4, along with numbers 19 and 23. The new number 4 Mark I T sniper rifle was announced in February 1942, along with a chest number 15, telescope case and number 32 sight adjustment tool. Renowned London gun makers Holland & Holland took up conversion of Britain's number 4 sniper rifles. Most were selected from Shirley production, although a few Maltby and Savage actions have been noted. Some Stephen Savage No. 4 Mark I and Mark I star rifles were fitted with the mount pads, although few were set up with the telescopic sight. From 1940, No. 4 sniping equipment was set up at Long Branch in Canada, and nearly 1,000 No. 4 T equipment supplied to Canadian forces. British-made No. 4 rifles have consecutive numbers stamped on the clamping rings. The mount bracket is a steel casting secured to pads on the action body by two thumb screws. Back sights have battle apertures ground off so as not to fail the telescope when fitted. Three marks of the number 32 sight were used on the British number 4 T sniper rifle. The number 32 Mark I telescopic sight has a sliding brass eye shade. Its elevation and windage drums are slightly offset. The number 32 Mark II sight looks similar but for the eye shade. Differences are mainly internal. The number 32 Mark III sight has a different drum arrangement, vertically in line. Ongoing improvements were bloomed lenses, a blue B painted on the tube, then better sealing with a red W painted on the tube. Mark III scopes were later used for the 7.62mm L42A1 by merely recalibrating the deflection drum and reading yards as metres. The tubes were re-engraved with the new designation. 
Canada's Long Branch No. 4 sniper rifle used a No. 4 Mark I star action. Markings on Canadian equipment are a little different. Sights were made by Research Enterprises Limited and are marked REL. Designations are prefixed with a C, as there are some differences to the British scopes. Canadian No. 32 sights were Marks 1, 1A, 2, 3 and 4 models. Lyman Alaskan scopes were also fitted, designated as C No. 32 TP Mark 1, after 100 were brought in to fill urgent orders. Griffin and Howe mounts were used, with the Lyman Alaskan and other trial sights. In Britain, rifle numbers 4 Mark 2, Mark 1 slash 2, Mark 1 slash 3, and number 4 Mark 1 slash 2T were introduced in 1949, along with a Bowie blade bayonet rather than a spike. On the number 4 Mark II rifle, brazing attached the new trigger mounts to the half million body forgings in stock for assembly as new rifles. Eventually, about 70% of the Mark II rifles were made up from new forgings. Mark I and Mark I star rifles were converted to the hung trigger too. The rifle number 4 Mark II differs mainly in the action body, accommodating the trigger, which saw changes to the forend and trigger guard. The forend is relieved at the back for the new trigger hinge blocks, and there is no reinforcing tie strap across the back of the forestock. Mark I and Mark I star rifles upgraded to 1 slash 2 and 1 slash 3 conversions had their forends modified by removing the steel tie plate and inletting wood plugs into the recesses. A thin transverse screw or cross pin readily identifies these rifles. Some conversions were fitted with the new Mark II forends which still have the cross screw but don't have the wooden conversion dowels. For enthusiasts today take their Lee Enfields to the rifle range as clubs cater for historical shoots. The number four rifle has a strong following and competition shooters with fine adjustment sights regularly prevail over most other military bolt-action rifles.